The House of Commons voted to renew the UK nuclear deterrent programme Trident, and subsequently committed to the Dreadnought programme, which at the time was known as the Successor Class. The new Dreadnought class, built by Bay Systems, is expected to replace the existing Vanguard class within the Royal Navy. It will be larger than the previous class, with a length of around 153.6 meters and a total displacement of 17,200 t. It will use the Rolls-Royce PWR-3 nuclear reactor, a US design that is said to be simpler and safer than the PWR-2 nuclear reactor on the Vanguard class, while also having a longer lifespan and lower maintenance requirements. The British plans to build four Dreadnought-class submarines at a total lifetime cost of £31 billion, according to the Minister of Defence, although it has set aside a contingency sum of £10 billion. The Dreadnought-class's armament includes four 21 inches torpedo tubes to fire BAE's Spearfish heavyweight torpedoes, and 12 ballistic missile tubes that act as the nuclear deterrent and fire up to 12 Lockheed Trident 2D5 submarine-launched ballistic missiles, each carrying eight warheads. The high initial cost projects of the program has come under scrutiny from various anti-nuclear groups such as the Nuclear Information Service and the Campaign for Nuclear Disarmament, who have said that the true lifetime cost of the future submarines could be as high as £170 billion and £205 billion respectively. Although commonly referred to as the renewal or replacement of Trident, the Dreadnought program is about the design, development and manufacture of four new Dreadnought-class ballistic missile submarines that will maintain the British's nuclear posture of continuous at-sea deterrence. A common missile compartment for the ballistic missile submarines class, which will house the existing Trident strategic weapons system, is being developed in conjunction with the United States. The first Dreadnought-class ballistic missile submarines is now expected to enter service in the early 2030s and will have a service life of at least 30 years. Replacement of the Trident 2D5 missile itself is not part of the program. The UK is, however, participating in the US current service life extension program for the Trident 2D5 missile, which will extend the life of the missile potentially to the early 2060s. Replacement of the nuclear warhead is also not part of the Dreadnought program. After having deferred a decision on replacement in the 2010 SDSDR, in February 2020 the government confirmed that a replacement program is underway. Transition to the new warhead, which will be compatible with the Trident missile system, is expected from the late 2030s onwards. Delivery of the program recognizing that the Dreadnought program is one of the largest government investment programs going forward, specifically with reference to governance and oversight of delivery. A new submarine delivery agency has been established, which became an executive agency of the Minister of Defence in April 2018. That agency will manage the procurement and in-service support of all current and future nuclear submarines, including Dreadnought. In tandem, the Minister of Defence and its two key industrial partners on the Dreadnought programme, Bay Systems and Rolls-Royce, have formed a new commercial alliance in order to jointly deliver the programme. Bay Systems has for the first time revealed the significant contribution the Dreadnought submarine programme makes to the UK economy, supporting almost 30,000 jobs across the country. While nearly half of these jobs reside in the northwest of England, the supply chain for Dreadnought extends to every region of the UK. Working with partners Rolls-Royce and the Submarine Delivery Agency as part of the Dreadnought Alliance, Bay Systems estimates it will spend in the region of £7.5 billion with 1,500 supply chain companies over the life of the programme across England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. The Dreadnought-class boats will be the Royal Navy's biggest, most powerful and most technically advanced submarines when they begin to enter service from the early 2030s and will play a pivotal role in the nation's defence and security for decades to come. Work on the first two boats in the class is well underway at the company's shipyard in Barrow in Furness, Cumbria. We maintain and develop the UK's independent nuclear deterrent to counter the most extreme threats to the national security and way of life of both ourselves and our allies. This sovereign showcase in science and engineering highlights the prowess of British industry whilst investing billions into the economy, supporting tens of thousands of jobs and benefiting 1,500 companies across the four corners of the UK, Secretary of State for Defence, Hon Ben Wallace said. To maintain its position as the custodian of the UK's submarine design and build capability, the Barrow site is being transformed to accommodate the new class of boat, with approximately £1 billion of investment in facilities and infrastructure. A further £450 million is being invested in new technology to optimise the design and manufacturing processes and enhance the capability of the submarine.
In May 2018 the Minister of Defence signed contracts for the second phase of the build programme. That phase had been expected to last for three years. However, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, delivery phase 2 has now been extended for one year, to March 2022. The Minister of Defence estimates that the current work rate on the Dreadnought programme is around 95% of pre-COVID-19 output. Under the management of the Dreadnought Alliance delivery phase 2 will continue the design and build of the first Dreadnought submarine and commence the build of the second, including furthering the design and manufacture of the nuclear propulsion power plant. According to the Minister of Defence 2020 annual report the programme remains on schedule, despite the extension of delivery phase 2. Bay Systems, Rolls-Royce and Babcock International are the Tier 1 industrial partners in this project. Although the Minister of Defence has contracted directly with Bay Systems and Rolls-Royce for production, hundreds of suppliers across the UK are working on the Dreadnought programme. As the programme moves forward Bay Systems has estimated that 85% of its supply chain will be based in the UK, potentially involving around 850 British companies. Yet, it is unclear how much of the value of the overall programme rests with that supply chain in the UK and how much will be spent overseas. To date Bay Systems has contracted for the specialised high-strength steel required for the submarines from a French supplier. The use of foreign steel in the construction of the Dreadnought class has raised many questions over whether more can be done to promote the British steel industry within Minister of Defence programmes. The cost of the programme has been estimated at £31 billion, including defence inflation over the life of the programme. A £10 billion contingency has also been set aside. Once the new nuclear deterrent comes into service the annual in-service costs are expected to continue at approximately 6% of the defence budget. In its 2020 update to Parliament the Minister of Defence confirmed that the programme remains within its cost estimate and that, by the end of March 2020, £8.5 billion has been spent on the concept, assessment and early delivery phases of the project. To keep the programme on track, reduce risk and achieve cost efficiencies, additional investment for the early years of the programme was announced as part of the autumn 2018 budget statement and the 2019 spending round. This was not extra funding for the programme, but money that has been re-profiled. In December 2020 the Minister of Defence confirmed that £1 billion of the contingency fund has been made available to the department thus far. A further £1.3 billion of the contingency fund has been made available for 2021-2025, should it be required. In line with convention, the Dreadnought programme will be funded from the Minister of Defence Corps equipment budget. The National Audit Office has, however, raised concerns over the impact of the Minister of Defence nuclear programmes on the affordability of the department's overall equipment plan.